Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to continue to take a look at series and when they converge and when they diverge. Now, in some previous videos, we've already taken a look at a few different tests. The first test might have been the most obvious, and that's the test for divergence. Taking the limit as n goes to infinity of each term had better be equal to zero. We, we need the terms to get infinitely small if we plan to add up infinitely many of them in order for us to be convergent. So the divergence test just says that if the terms aren't tending toward zero, it's definitely divergent. Still super useful. But unfortunately, our next few tests, the integral test and the comparison tests, needed all of the terms to be positive, which is a little restrictive. So in this video, we're going to take a look at the alternating series test. It's designed for alternating series. And that's when uh, you have a series where the terms flip back and forth from positive to negative. So let's start with that definition. An alternating series is a series whose terms are alternately positive and negative. Now we could start with a positive or we could start with a negative term. Let's just see if we can kind of construct an expression to make terms flip back and forth from positive to negative. Let's take a look at 1 minus a half plus 1 third minus 1 quarter plus 1 fifth minus 1 sixth and so on. And you'll see it looks just like the harmonic series except that well, every second term, all of the even numbered n's are negated. So how do we make this into a nice expression and write it in sigma notation? Let's assume we want to use the index n and we want to start indexing our terms from n equals 1 up to infinity. Well, part of it might be obvious. It just looks like the harmonic series. So let's start off with that 1 over n. That'll give us 1 plus a half plus a third plus 1 quarter. Now, how do we flip the signs for all the even numbered terms? Well, to flip a sign is nothing more than multiplying by minus one. So we'll put a minus one in there, but unfortunately that's gonna make all of the terms negative. So what we need to do here is actually put a power on that minus one. And remember that if we have negative one to an even power, then it is positive one. So first thing we can do is we'll put an N on there, negative one to the N. When n equals 1, though, that would mean our first term is negative. And when n equals 2, that means that the even terms are positive now. So we'll fix that and we'll have minus 1 to the n minus 1. Sure enough, by checking that out, anytime n is an even number, we'll have minus 1 to an odd power. And that gives us a negative term in our series. Now, what if we wanted to start off with a negative term and then alternate? What if I have negative two-fifths plus four-eighths minus six-elevenths plus eight-fourteenths minus ten over seventeen. Now I haven't reduced some of those fractions on purpose so that we can see that the numerators keep going up by two and the denominators keep going up by three. Not only that, we also have alternating negative and positive. Well let's start off by again saying that the index maybe is going to be n equals one to infinity. We can see that when n equals 1, we have 2 in the numerator. When n equals 2, we have 4 in the numerator. When n equals 3, we have 6 in the numerator. So the numerator always appears to be 2n. And in the denominator, well, they're going up by 3s. So that might be 3n. Except that when n equals 1, we actually have 5. And when n equals 2, we have 8. Well, that's not exactly 3 times n. That's 3 times n plus 2 more. Well, that gives us a nice expression to get the values, but we need to make sure that we also include a negative sign where it's appropriate. So we'll multiply by negative 1, and to make sure that it is negative on all the odd-numbered terms, we'll just have negative 1 to the power n. When n is odd, we'll get a negative term, and when n is even, we'll get a positive term. So you can see that each of these sort of alternating series, our expression for a n, is going to be negative 1 to the n minus 1 times some expression bn, or we'll have a n equal to negative 1 to the n times some expression bn. And that's generally what we'll see when we have an alternating series. Now, let's see if we can use the alternating series test to determine when these may be convergent and when they may be divergent. The alternating series test says that if we have an alternating series, and here we'll use the form minus one to the n minus one times some expression bn. That would be like starting on a positive term, but I mean, it doesn't really matter if we start on a negative or a positive, they're gonna get you the same value, just opposite signs. 
If our alternating series satisfies two criteria, then we know it's convergent. The first criteria is that bn plus 1 must be less than or equal to bn. So taking the expression not involving that negative 1 factor, that means that every new term in the series must be smaller or equal to the term immediately preceding it. Each term must get sequentially smaller, ignoring that negative 1 factor. And the second one is actually kind of related to the test for divergence. We also have to have that the limit of our bn's must equal zero as n goes to infinity. Those two criteria, and we know it's convergent. This test doesn't say otherwise divergent, unfortunately, but we can at least tell when something is convergent by using this test. The test for divergence may be really useful here to, to show when a series is divergent. So let's try an example or two. Let's start off with that first example of alternating series. We call it the alternating harmonic series because it's just the harmonic series with alternating signs. Well, let's see. Does it satisfy both of these two criteria? Starting off with criteria number one. We would need to show that bn plus 1 is less than or equal to bn. Now remember here, an is each term on its own. And that is equal to negative 1 to the n minus 1 times bn. So bn here is simply 1 over n. So bn plus 1, that's just the expression 1 over n plus 1. That would be the next term that comes right after 1 over n. And sure enough, 1 over n plus 1 is always less than or equal to 1 over n. In fact, they're never equal to each other. We could even make that a strict less than. So we can at least check that criteria off. It satisfies the first hypothesis of the alternating series test. But what about the second? We also need to show that the limit of each term's bn component needs to go to zero as n goes to infinity. So once again, ignoring that negative 1 to the n minus 1 factor, we just need to check and see whether or not the limit of 1 over n as n goes to infinity equals zero. Sure enough, it does. So it satisfies those two criteria. Now, if you notice, those two criteria alone weren't sufficient to show that the non-alternating harmonic series converge. It's actually only going to help us with the alternating harmonic series, and in fact, it does converge. That was kind of an interesting scenario. The harmonic series is divergent, but the alternating harmonic series is convergent. You may even be able to tell visually as to how the alternating harmonic series is convergent, but its non-alternating harmonic series is not. If we were to imagine a number line starting at zero, we could start adding each of these numbers up. And so when we add one, we're going to be traveling one unit to the right. And then we're subtracting a half, so we'll travel a half unit to the left. And then we'll travel one third of a unit to the right. And then we'll travel one quarter of a unit to the left. So you might be able to imagine by continuing this pattern of zigzagging back and forth, that we might be starting to converge on some sort of finite number here between 0 and 1. However, when we just look a look at the harmonic series, we're always stepping to the right, and it's quite possible that we would never converge on some finite number anymore. So there's a little bit of a difference there. Let's take a look at another example of an alternating series. In this alternating series, we start on a negative term, since you can see that minus 1 to the n. And our bn is 2n over 5n plus 3. Now remember, if you really wanted to write this with negative 1 to the n minus 1, it's quite possible. All we would have to do is take one of those factors of minus 1 out, and that can also be factored right out of our summation notation. So these are equivalent, and it's almost kind of just an extra useless step to try to force all of our alternating series to have that minus 1 to the n minus 1. We'll just apply the alternating series test as it is. Now, there are two conditions to check for the alternating series test. One of those is that each consecutive b needs to get smaller than the previous, so bn plus 1 needs to be less than or equal to bn. And we also need to show that the limit as n goes to infinity of these bn's must equal 0. As it turns out, the series actually fails both of those. But we'll have to show that. The easier one to show is that 
Well, the limit as n goes to infinity of 2n over 5n plus 3 is actually 2 fifths. It's not equal to 0. That's a fairly easy limit to evaluate by dividing the numerator and denominator by n or by using L'Hopital's rule. So right away, this is already failing our alternating series test. But that's not enough to know it's divergent. Showing that this doesn't satisfy that first criteria is a little bit trickier. bn plus 1 is the expression 2 times n plus 1 over 5 times n plus 1 plus 3. Trying to make a comparison between that and bn, which is just this, the good old 2n over 5n plus 3, is a little bit tricky since we're adding a value to both the numerator and the denominator. When we have a comparison that's very tricky like that, one thing you can do is you can turn this actually into a function and determine if the function is increasing or decreasing by taking a look at its derivative. If we let f of n equal 2n over 5n plus 3, then using the quotient rule and simplifying, the derivative would be 6 over 5n plus 3 squared, which you'll notice is always positive, so it's actually an increasing function. That means that bn plus 1 is greater than bn. So we cannot use the alternating series test to show that this converges. What we could do instead is use the test for divergence to show that this is a divergent series. If we look at the whole term a n, including that minus 1 to the n. Now we're taking a look at the limit as n goes to infinity of negative 1 to the n times 2 n over 5 n plus 3. Now we see when n goes to infinity, well, 2n over 5n plus 3 gets closer and closer to 2 fifths, but it's the minus 1 to the n that makes this limit not exist. Negative 1 to any positive integer is going to be positive 1. Negative 1 to any negative integer is negative 1. And so this limit can never equal a single value. And since this limit does not exist, then by the test for divergence, this series is divergent. Now at this point in time, we've seen some series with only positive terms and kind of figured out maybe when they converge or diverge. And we've taken a look at series that have very nicely alternating positive and negative terms and kind of have an idea about when they might converge. But what if you have a series that has kind of an unpredictable series of positive and negative terms? Well, at that point in time, we can at least start thinking a little bit more about what we call absolute convergence. For any given series, if we label those terms a n, we say that it is absolutely convergent if the series of absolute values is convergent. So that'll be taking the absolute value of a1 plus the absolute value of a2 plus the absolute value of a3 and so on. Now we've already seen a series that is alternating and convergent, but its absolute values are not convergent. And that would be the alternating harmonic series. We've just seen that the alternating harmonic series, 1 minus a half plus a third minus a quarter, is convergent. But we already know that the harmonic series that is non-alternating is divergent. So you can almost imagine that if we're throwing a few negative signs in there and taking a look at the sum, it might be a little easier to be convergent, since having sums of positives and negatives combined together might allow us to get some sort of real number that's finite. But adding up only positive values or adding up only negative values, then is more likely that is going to be infinite or divergent. If a series is convergent, but not absolutely convergent, then we call it conditionally convergent. So in the case of our alternating harmonic series, we already know that convergence does not imply absolute convergence. However, there's a very important theorem that says the converse of that statement. If a series is absolutely convergent, then it must be convergent. What this theorem allows us to do is take the absolute value of some sort of series with maybe sporadic positive and negative signs and just take a look at its absolute value series. And if we can determine that it is absolutely convergent, then the series itself must be convergent. As a quick example, let's take a look at a series negative 1 to the power n over n cubed. Of course, this is an alternating series on its own, and the first term is going to be negative. This is negative 1 plus 1 over 2 cubed minus 1 over 3 cubed plus 1 over 4 cubed minus 1 over 5 cubed. Rather than taking a look and seeing whether or not this is convergent by the alternating series test, why don't we just take a look and see if it is absolutely convergent? 
we'll take a look at the absolute value. Taking a look at the absolute value series, we're going to take the absolute value of negative 1 to the n, but that's always going to equal 1. And we're going to take the absolute value of n cubed. Well, and that's always going to be n cubed for n greater than 0. So the absolute value series is simply just the series 1 over n cubed from n equals 1 to infinity. And we know that that is convergent because it's a p-series with p greater than 1. That tells us that our series minus 1 to the n over n cubed is absolutely convergent. And therefore, it is also convergent. So now we've been able to take a look at a few series with some negative terms in there finally. It's really helpful if they have a predictable pattern and it is alternating back and forth. The alternating series test is actually one of the quickest to use. Don't forget that test for divergence is also really quick for finding out whether or not a series might diverge. But we're going to be taking a look at this idea of absolute convergence or conditional convergence again in the future. We have a couple other tests that are going to be very helpful for determining when a series may converge or diverge. But we're going to be taking a look at mostly about whether or not they are absolutely convergent. So stay tuned for those couple other tests. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.